It's a really interesting thought, John, because you mentioned being cancelled, and I think that's one of the difficulties in having any conversation. I'm really appreciating the way you're coming at it, um, because how do we have a conversation? Because we've got to a point where any insensitive comment, any insensitive remark is automatically now, you know, it's the worst thing you can do in society, saying something wrong, and you will get destroyed. Your career will be ruined, etc. But how do we, How, like you've just said something which I think is probably true, which is a female referee, assistant referee, a lot of men will be like, well, let's see at least, at the very least, they'll, they'll, have, they'll be extra wary, right? How do we have that conversation? Because you've just admitted that that's how most men will think. But if anyone said, I think a woman <laughs> is probably less capable, you'd be, you'd be wrecked. That's what I mean. But, so what we have to do, we have to challenge why you think that in the first place. So I think a man will be better. And I'm happy to say that. But what I mean by that is that my initial thought is, yes, a man will be better. And then before I even see whether he's better or not, she's better or not, I say to myself, why did I think that? Because I've only with myself and I say, why I've thought that? Because life has wrongly shown me that men are better than women. But that's wrong to think that. So because I've owned it and I've said, then I can change it. If I just go, well, no, I, I don't make, I'm, that's what the truth and reconciliation is. We have to be honest with ourselves. And it's not just with women, it's with race, it's with gender, it's with North and South. I got off the train yesterday. I got off the train yesterday at um, Houston. I had to go from King's Cross to Blackfriars, where the event was. As I'm walking through, there's lots of building work going on. And there was a conversation going on. I haven't got a clue what the conversation was. I just heard the man who I consider to be the foreman because he seemed to be in charge. I just heard his voice. Didn't hear anything else. All I heard him say was, that's a very Northern attitude to have. Now, I didn't even have to think what kind of an attitude that would have been, but I knew it would have been, an in, the perception would have been an inferior attitude because that's how we've been conditioned to think. So don't blame the individuals who get caught. Look at the environment they've been brought up in and challenge that rather than thinking, no, this doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, bias is not about, in fact, the book is not about race. I call it uncom uncomfortably about racism because racism is a hot topic at the moment and hopefully get more books out. <laughs> but to be honest with you, it's about, it's about, it's in very, inter it's about intersectionality. It's about, because from a black perspective also, you look at what's going on in the Caribbean and Africa, mm -hmm. and this is not a, this is not a judgment on the Caribbean and Africa. It's a judgment as the legacy of colonialism, which meant that from an elite point of view, you know, because they're still colonial, um, and from a, from an economic point of view, um, there's still uh, the legacy of colonial exploitation from a financial point of view. Because, of course, the West still controls the economics. So it's economic colonization is still going on. So don't blame black Africans for disenfranchising black Africans or black or light-skinned elite black Jamaicans because this is what has happened. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to simplify it by making it a white and a black issue. But it's not because, of course, one of the most uh, discriminated against groups who aren't considered at all in this debate are white working class people. Mm. Because they're, they're, they're suffering equally as well, not because they're white, but in other ways. So this is really what the book is about, so that we can have an honest conversation about discrimination, basically. But do you not think, John, that every time, you know, somebody says something which is racist or derogatory, or even it can be a slip of the tongue, and you see people being dragged for it on social media, and you see being, it being cancelled, and then it turns into a Twitter storm, and there's a pile on, every time we have that, it just sets us back sets another, us back. Absolutely. another step. It depends what it is. That's why I'm saying intent is the most important thing. Yeah. Look at it, for example, like with um, Amber Rudd and, and Diane Abbott. Yeah. When Amber Rudd said that women have it hard in politics, let's have that conversation. Women in politics have a hard time. Let's have that conversation. A more hard-hitting and meaningful conversation is now how hard black women have it in politics. Mm -hmm. But Amber Rudd said colored women have it even harder. Is she, is she not being positive about, but she said the wrong words. She said colored instead of black. So instead of Diane Abbott saying, well, you know, you should have said black, not colored, but let's have this discussion about how hard it is for black women. She never said that. She said sacker because she said colored. So that conversation's <laughs> lost. 